So let's start out our discussion of threads with an introduction to threads and an introduction to threading. And Java concurrency is supported largely through threads these days. At some point, there may be other mechanisms for supporting concurrency, like coroutines, but they're not part of Java yet. Concurrent applications use threads to simultaneously run multiple computations that can potentially interact with each other. They don't have to interact with each other. They may be so-called embarrassingly parallel, which means they have no dependencies on other threads. But for most of our discussion for concurrency, the, the threads will interact either directly or indirectly through other means like access to synchronizers and so on. Threads are the fundamental way of doing concurrency in Java. A Java thread is a unit of computation that runs in the context of a process. I'll talk about what a process is in a second. You can find out more about threads here at this link. So we have some icons to help make sense of this. The little gray round angle says process B in it is a process. I'll explain what a process is momentarily. And then a thread is some unit of computation running in the context of a process. A process, in, in uh, contrast to a thread, is a unit of computation. I'm uh, sorry, unit of resource protection and allocation. Thread is a unit of computation. So a process provides a context in which one or more threads run. And within a process, threads are provided with several things by the process. They're provided with resources like memory, for example, and other means of doing things like keeping track of open files and so on. And they're also provided with protection. What does it mean to have protection? It means that if we have multiple threads running in multiple processes, that a thread in one process can't accidentally uh, manipulate or corrupt the state of other threads running in other processes. So a process is, is like a box, and you can't easily reach into somebody else's box without using other mechanisms we'll talk about later. Yes, sir? So a process is most commonly a concept from operating systems. So if you, if you take the OS course here, for example, you'll learn about processes, you'll learn about threads. In those contexts, they're talking about operating system processes. Java applications run in the context of an operating system process. So other technologies have other ways of doing things. If you program, for example, with older versions of operating systems like VxWorks, they don't have the concept of a process. They just have a concept of multiple threads all sharing some global address space. And the problem with that is if one of the threads goes berserk and starts scribbling all over the memory in the process, in the one and only process, that can damage all the other threads by corrupting them. So by having multiple processes, which is what you get when you run Java on an operating system platform like Windows or Linux or Solaris or whatnot, you get this protection. So a process is an operating system context. Java applications run in the context of a process. And as it says here, Java enables multiple threads to run in multiple processes. OK, so when Java threads run in the same process, they can interact or communicate via several means. They can either communicate using shared objects, and we'll use this as the icon for shared objects because it's a sharing icon. And they can also communicate by message passing. And we'll use a little message here to be message passing. So those are the ways that threads within a process can communicate. Uh, it turns out that if you want threads in different processes to communicate, you have to use some other mechanisms. And that'll be outside the scope of this class, by and large. The ways you can communicate would be between processes, threads in different processes talking to each other, could be either through something like shared memory, or it could be through something like inter-process communication or IPC mechanisms. And again, those are really fascinating topics. Android has great support for these capabilities, but we're not going to talk about them in this class very much, if at all. OK, so we'll be focusing almost exclusively on threads within a process interacting with each other through either shared objects or through message passing. Each Java thread has some resources that are unique 
to that thread. And the most important thing, or the most obvious thing, is each thread has a unique stack. And the stack is used to keep track of the activation records. As methods are called, they're pushed onto the stack. And so you have a stack of, of runtime methods that are stored in the stack of activation records. There's some other things that you get out of the box that are unique to a thread. You get registers that are used to keep track of various things in the, in the thread, like what the next instruction to execute will be. Um, if you have a stack, you have to keep track of where to jump back to when the current method finishes running. So there's a stack pointer and an instruction pointer and a frame pointer, all these kinds of good things. Um, there's also other things like thread-specific storage that are unique to each thread. So some resources are unique to each thread. There are other resources, however, that are shared by all the threads within a process. And so good examples of this would be dynamically allocated objects. Those come out of a global heap, and that heap is managed by the runtime environment within a process. So all the threads will share the memory from the same global heap. And there's also other things that can be shared, things like static objects. Those are also things, static Java objects can be shared across threads. Now, you have to be very careful. The minute you start sharing things, especially when you start sharing mutable things, that becomes the, the root of all evil in uh, concurrent programs, because that's where you can have race conditions and memory inconsistencies and things like that. Uh, and we'll talk more about that <laughs> stuff. Probably a good idea to remember the, what unique state is part of a thread and what common state is part of a thread, because that will most likely show up on a quiz question. And this is just a little icon saying, you know, we've got a runtime stack, and that'll be the stack of activation records that represent the method calls in that thread, starting with the run hook method, which is the first entry point method into a Java thread when it started. And then there's also sort of like some gears, you know, just other stuff that's lying around. OK, so that's the end of the overview of the, the Java threads discussion. Pretty straightforward. If slash when you take the operating systems course here, you'll learn lots and lots more about the mechanics of processes and threads. Java mercifully shields you from most of those mechanics and uh, provides you with a higher level, more convenient, more civilized object-oriented programming model.